Hey. There we go. We're good. Welcome back, denizens uh, of Twitch and the internet and Sunday people. People who only exist on a Sunday. They just cease to exist every other day of the week. It's, it's not, it must be a, it's, yeah, it's a nice life, really. You just <laughs> want to have like, one day of existential dread about why you exist, and then you're gone the rest of the week. <laughs> anyway... Welcome all to episode three of Byzantian Brews. How is everybody doing? Hope you're all fantastic and good. So, what, what, what have you been up to this week? I've been not as busy as I'd like with my usual things, because January's a, a quiet time for fundraising. Fair. <laughs> everyone's all giving, everyone's already done with giving, really, for the most part. Um, school visit this week. That was cute. That was nice. Um, but really, it's been a lot of dog sitting this week. Aww. happy doggos. I was very happy. The problem is he wouldn't sleep. <laughs> just this dog is just bouncing around all day. Like, please, I I need you to calm. No. Yeah, he, like, he, yeah, wants us to play fetch at like half eleven last night. <laughs> That's adorable. It's it's cute, but it's proper proper nodding off her by the end. It's like just, just go to sleep, please. <laughs> oh, I've been um I've been Any... cooking yeah. this week. I've been in the kitchen, yeah, having a bit of a, a, bit of a thrash. <laughs> just, yeah, the entire week. No, just Tuesday, just Tuesday, just mainly my cooking thing. I made um okay. I made a huge batch of potato and onion. Uh, I was going to say pie, it wasn't pie, it was soup. Pie and soup are two very different things. It was very good soup. The people I made it for are very happy. So, I succeeded in doing a cook. My my soup, my pie soup. My pie, yeah, yeah, pie mm. soup. <laughs> that, that makes sense. A, li a liquid pie. Mmm. <laughs> Wet. <What's> that? <laughs> Moist pie. <laughs> Oh, that's the the least appetizing thing you could put on a menu, I think. <laughs> it's just on the menu, moist pie. Hello, Haru. Welcome to the stream. So, yeah, I've been cooking. Uh, we played D&D on Tuesday. That was fun. Yep, yeah. yeah, we've been up in tunnels. Yeah, yeah, it's tun tunnel boys. <laughs> that was a raid. That was a... It was fun until it yeah. wasn't. The, the, the group I, I was DMing. Uh, Byzantia, amongst others, was in the group. Uh, just decided to come raid it, raiders for a bit, you know, just just for like tw ten minutes. Hello, Terry. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for your peepers. Thank you for your stare. Oh, and we played a game from nineteen ninety three. Yes, we'll be getting that to that later. Um, we'll be getting to that next week. So if you want to hear about our awesome adventures in Blood Berets, uh. Tune in yes. next week. First edition of Warzone. Yeah. First edition Warzone. And apparently they've got a Kickstarter. Oh, we might, oh, we might try and get... Is yes! I had Haggis on Thursday. That was cool, because it was Burns Night, and Spoons were doing Haggis for the week. And I was like, I'm never going to get uh, ever get another chance to try this. Well, at least until I get to Scotland, which... Well, you know, you know, it's like when I'm not going to get a chance to try this for quite some time, so I might as well take it now. It's like one pound fifty, a little bit of haggis, rather nice, actually. Um, except considering what it's made of. Hello, not into long time in pain. Okie dokie, petting the whole sheep. We are, we are good. The whole, the entire sheep. Just in one tiny bowl. It's really impressive. Yeah, really, really condensed. And now, the finest meat you'll ever eat. I'm now imagining like uh, Scottish people condensing down a sheep so much that it like becomes so dense, it becomes a black hole of just bar, just a woolly black hole. <laughs> it's like the everlasting gobstopper, but it's just like condensed sheep orb. <laughs> oh. But uh, yeah, so that's what I've been up to this week. Uh, I have built a big Lego thing that should be on the YouTube channel soon. I built the Lego apartment set and a couple other things. It's like five stories tall. It's quite impressive. 
That's in my city now. And there's a bit of a, there's a bit of like a where's Waldo aspect to it, wasn't there? Yes, my my city has like so many different minifigures from so many different like anime and things like that that it comes across. It look it, it genuinely looks like a very where's where's Wally kind of uh, picture. So like you could spot a Dalek, you can spot Goku, you could spot Elvis. You could spot uh, John Wick is in there somewhere. Uh, did, did, you, did you at least find a dog for him? Oh, I haven't got a dog for him yet. I should get a dog for John Wick. That's a good shout. There's um, there's a, there's, a, there's like XP yeah. level three who's another uh, Dungeons and Dragons content creator. He's actually there. Yeah. He has a minifig. Yeah, well, he doesn't have a minifig, but I made a custom That's one. Uh, he's got like a, I gave oh, him the, 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 one of the squishy cops because obviously Lego doesn't have a G Fuel can yet. But I've dressed him like the 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 G Fuel wizard. <laughs> if you remember that joke, that I cast fireballs, nice. etc. Uh, Indiana Jones in this lot um, somewhere. There's Whitebeard and Luffy from One Piece. A few other One Piece characters. There's the original Super Sentai Man because they did him in a Lego like um, collectible minifigure series. There's some Ninjago boys. Ultraman. Yeah. Uh, there's fucking Gyarados oh, yeah. from Pokemon. Uh, there's Shaggy and Scooby. Who else is in this group? There's there's a there's a lot. There's too and much. They all to share mention. one apartment. They all shit. It's like yeah, it's like that one episode of Friends. <laughs> they all just share one apartment. It's it's very yeah, funny. but it's uh it's London prices uh gets you about a cardboard box. Yep, that sounds about right. But yeah, I've been building lately. I've been doing some a lot of editing for my YouTube shit as well. So that's been a lot of that's been a lot of what my week has been. Uh, yeah. I didn't even put the waffle on screen. Oops. There we go. A waffle. waffle for all of like 10 seconds. Enjoy that waffle. Enjoy 10 seconds of waffle. Your your government mandated 10 seconds of waffle. Put, get it like, um, get it in like Cyrillic. Like, this is like this is a state sponsored message. <laughs> it, is, it is the waffle hour. <laughs> the, the waffle hour. Your government yes. mandate. You must watch the, the Waffle Channel for one hour each Sunday. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, salute. Give yeah. a salute. Otherwise, otherwise you'll be you'll be we sent. Will know if you don't. You'll be sent to the Waffle Lags, I guess. Well, the Waffle Factory, where they <laughs> where they where they make not, waffles. Not, the waffles aren't baked or anything. They're not baked or anything. They're just like manufactured on a line. Yeah. Very, very industrial waffles. Ignore the rust. Ignore the rust. Oh, uh, we haven't, we haven't upgraded the machine since we le since we stopped being a Soviet <laughs> nation. Don't worry about it. We still Ooh. got the machines. Still work. <laughs> oh. It's so tinny. This one. It's a bit tinny. Yes. Anyways. Right, so, um, what have we got for Tabletop Book Club this week? Woo! Oh, Michelle, I have a shelf full, but I didn't pick the whole shelf. Um, yeah. Let me just find it. We'll walk, walk the ten miles over to my shelf. When I was a kid, I had to walk ten miles to my game, war gaming shelf, and I couldn't even... Play a Warhammer. We only had Rogue Trader. We liked it. We did. We didn't have D6. We had to use bones. <laughs> uh, I had to. You had to steal. Ah, the... oh, there you go. <laughs> Don't worry. I was making a we did back in my day joke. We didn't have dice. We rolled the, we rolled seven skulls. We just found on the road, <laughs> wait for a car accident, we had to pick up the skulls, and then hope they were die shaped. <laughs> oh. so what what book you got for us this week? 
I have uh, something I picked up from Games Workshop last time I uh, went down to the HQ in Nottingham. Yep. It's a re release of uh, the I think it's second edition Chaos. Uh, they call it the Realm of the Damned, uh, Realm of Chaos book, Ooh. which they re released. And it's a really, it's all the uh, old school Chaos stuff you could ever want. Nice. I think you might like it actually, Jake, because it's got loads of. Loads of random tables, mm-hmm. or oh, like, random mutations tables. and stuff. Ah, oh, we like we love random yes. tables. Random tables are fun. Yes, uh, it's got tables for generating a uh, second edition Warhammer uh, Chaos Warbands, champions, mutations, nice demons, beats of chaos. You name it, just loads of fun stuff like that. Awesome. And it's I've used it for. I've actually used it for quite a few D and D demon designs. They're right. They're quite. We we'll have to modify it a bit, but they're quite good. Um, mm-hmm. you, you pay Games Workshop price for it, but it is a really fat book, and it covers fantasy and the and forty k as well. So it it does literally everything you could ask it to do. Um, yeah, I would. I I, I kind of love it. Um, let's have a look. It does, however, have some really good artwork and like the uh, you know the very some of the early sculpts and like. The stuff that the game designers kit bashed like back in the day, yeah, and some of them are a little bit upsetting to look at. Um, <laughs> oh, that's the best kind of mo- just... mini models, though. Oh yeah, I think I put it. I put it in the chat. Um, I'm trying to find it. Find, find the image of it. I think it's like a chaos beast, or it's supposed to be. Um, and it's got like, if you know your arms, like, like the, the legs of like a. Like the Slanesh stalker, like the the, the Slaneshy horses, uh huh, and like a really weird hu- bald human face. It's it's very it's very. I'll try and find it. Oh, I found it. Uh, they're all kind of upsetting. Them. Is it like the era of like squat marines with stretchy arms? Hmm. Uh, just, yeah, when, when they. When the team just literally just kit bashed everything. Nice. Some really cool models in there, but it's definitely like you couldn't do that unless you you knew someone at Games Workshop all flat out worked there. Yeah, it was that that era of Warhammer. I do look, I do look at though because I actually cared about the books. Everything mm. gets a write up. Everything, which is a bit more exciting than like. Intention is a good game. It's a pretty, de- it's a decent game, but they don't uh, go crazy on, um, they don't go crazy on all the lore and the fun stuff that made the books, you know, yeah, worth I... the money most of the time. I remember having the, I guess, I don't know what, what specific edition it was, but the old pre-sundering Skaven lore book, well, source book, and it was just yeah. filled with just, this is what this clan are, this is what they're about, this is what... I don't know. Here's, uh, here's one special character that does appear in the game, but he's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's put, yeah. And things uh, like... Okay, yeah. So I found, found the... Yeah. Carry on, what sorry. specific like, things they like to use, whatever, things like that. That sort of thing. I miss those times. Yeah, so it was just stuff to actually read as well as see a fun stat block, which yeah, obviously important to the game, but it's, at least sometimes it's a bit more with a fun ball. Um, I found the found the the. It's apparently it's a chaos spawn, so it looks kind of like an ostrich mm-hmm. with the head of a really of an adult baby. Oh, oh! <laughs> um, yeah, the, the weird thing about it, though, the guy riding it looks like a pretty bog standard chaos knight. Interesting. So we've got like. You've got a normal looking knight on like um something from like the Garden of Earthly Delights, if you know that if you know that uh, that portrait. Yeah. I think I remember. Oh, it, that. What's the name? Uh, yeah, it's it it literally looks like something from, from that that portrait. And I kinda love it. <laughs> gonna have to gonna have to repost it as like some sort of sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> It looks just, like the kind of thing that wouldn't actually hurt you. It would just look at you. Just look at you really weirdly. It would just sort of 
make you look uncomfortable. Then it would leave. It would just leave you forever on wondering why it appeared or what it was out to do. Hmm. You'd never get the answer. You just, you'd be like every now and again, it'd be dark, and I just remember. Remember that weird thing? It's all that you just like. Then you just check. The, you know the kind of fear you get when you're like, uh, have you ever watched a, a, a horror film too late or something? Yeah. You check in every corner, just in case there's some implausible murderer or something just waiting there with a knife or something. It's like that, but it's but it's, it's the baby baby headed ostrich beast. Oh. It's kind of. It wouldn't do anything. It's just perpetually confusing. Oh, I love it. I kind of, I kind of wish Tenth Edition had it now. Just yeah. a whole, a whole unit of them. So, yeah, it's honestly a fantastic little yeah. book. Yeah, it's more of an art book than anything else. Which uh, is fine, but it is a really solid read. Yeah. It's a really good book. Um, and if you want to, you, if you play Warhammer, you don't, and you want some cool ideas for demons and devils. I kind of would, yeah, kind of give it down out of ten. Mm. So, I've got the, another Sovereign Stone. I want to preface this. So, this is apparently these are apparently th th third edition content books. These are third edition. Um, but yeah, I've got this book. It's another Sovereign Stone one in Sovereign Stone series. It's called Old Vinengale. I might have butchered that spelling. Uh, City I... of Sorrows by Douglas Niles. So I think it's part of the same sort of series. Oh, but it's another kind lovely. of expansion which adds some more world building stuff. Uh, so it adds more world building stuff. It's got some more creatures, I think, in it. Uh, it has some new spells, interestingly enough. You know, back when books that weren't, you know, fucking Mordekainen's having actual spells in them, rather than just one fucking book that has yeah. spells in it. Uh, we've got, yes, yeah, so it talks about like, districts uh, of places. On, um, but importantly, it's got it's got a bunch of new prestige classes. Ooh. So, it has battle so magi. From, so from, Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, is, uh, I remember it's the same book where you can play an unhorsed dwarf on a horse. Yes, yes. Uh, here you could play an unhorsed battle magi on a horse, <laughs> unhorsed battle Ooh. magi dwarf on a horse. <laughs> so that the, the what, I'm, what I'm looking at from oh. battle magi is it looks like it's kind of a combination of martial and wizardry, but obviously not as good at either as a competent sort of mage or warrior. Yeah. But at least it gives you the option, unlike fucking vanilla D and D that doesn't that, gi that gives you weird options and things like feats you could go for but not really a dedicated Eldritch Knight, class though. for it eldritch knight is a bit eh. eldritch knight yeah that's more of a warlock thing isn't it though not straight wizard no i've always thought what what's what splits it apart is eldritch knight your magic is entirely yours hmm the other like like warlock, you mean your your powers are tied to your patron. So if you, yeah. if you have a DM that really likes their patrons, they might say, "Nah, I don't think the spell works." <laughs> yeah, uh, we've also got in here, we've got <laughs> elite border and skirmisher, green Ooh. warden, which is like a different version of um, ranger, master assassin, which I assume yeah. would probably be similar to Five E's nice. assassin as well. But we've got new spells: breath of rust. Ooh. Chill of the Void, Dark Sphere, Devouring Flame, okay. Shadow Lock, and Wizard Lock. I don't know what Wizard Lock is. Is that when you just lock a wizard up in a cage? Uh, ah, so Wizard Lock. This summons a big cage. So, used to protect portals from being breached. Wizard Lock spells were quite commonly used in the time of Old Vinegar. Uh When cast upon a portal, it doubles the portal's hardness and hit points. That adds plus 20 to the break DC, both for stuck and locked checks. It can be used to effectively increase the strength of wood, stone, and metal portals. So I guess that's very much a third it's edition doors. type. Yeah. Oh, possibly, yes. It was, my portals, I, I assumed it meant like you could just like give a magic portal hit points. It was very weird. Yeah. Why do they call it a portal and not, you know, a door or a doorway? 
I think that's an archaic way to say entrance. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's point. cool. You can, like, lock up your magic portals. No, no, it's not not magic portals. That... <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's, like, the interplanar equivalent of, like, house keys? <laughs> uh. so breath I mean, of... yeah, it came through a portal, but I don't want anything following me. Bre breath of Rust is interesting. It is only, like, personal Ooh. range. Burst affecting two foot radius of ferrous metal. So it's a two foot radius, let's say, for 5A's instance. Do no saving throw, but can be affected by resistance. Okay. By breathing on an object as he completes this spell, the mage causes ferrous objects to instantly rust away, becoming useless. If the item does not completely fit within the radius of the effect, it suffers a total loss of 2d6 damage. Magical Lion I items are immune to the spell but can you fucking imagine you know you know the enemy uh, a bandit comes up to you bandit chief comes up to you being the wizard being the squishy one hits a few times brings you low and then you just turn his sword into just rusted dust like nah mate fuck you that's really sassy you just sort of like casually just you had it <laughs> just just sort of grand like casting just, just sort of breathing on his <laughs> yeah. his fucking War axe just turns into mush. I love that. That sounds like a spell that would be interesting in another game. Um, yeah. Because there's not enough, like, especially if the game has a built in system of weapon durability, Dude. which yeah. is. Yeah. You've got to. You've got to have to decide, like, at step one if it's going to have it or not. Otherwise, it's really awkward. Hmm. Oh, Chill of the Void. That's... Chill of the Void makes Ooh. weapons more difficult to grasp. Amongst other things. Any metal item touched... Makes... When... Is it... Oh, any metal item touched when the spell is cast is immediately exposed to the absolute coldness of the void, shattering beneath the onslaught and effectively destroyed. So it's another kind of similar thing to Breath of Rust, but Breath of Rust. But if it doesn't destroy it, it can destroys 1d6 points of armor class gained from metal armor. Um, weapons in use by an opponent targeted by spell are more difficult to grasp. A mage must exceed a melee touch attack against the weapon. The metal weapon that is hit is also is destroyed. Not destroying an opponent's weapon provokes an attack of opportunity. Striking an opponent's weapon provokes an attack of opportunity in the third edition, apparently. Huh. Interesting. Living creatures in contact with the metal so object, they take Damn! Oh, and oh, they may have to make a a, a constitution save in this fortitude if they're touching the metal object. All else suffer a minus one d six enhancement penalty to strength. <laughs> Sounds like the you know, that feeling when you touch ice. Yeah, with bare like, hands. Oh. Yeah, against metal creatures, <laughs> chill of the void instantaneously deals three d eight points of damage. Oh, I like this. I like the write-up for that. Yeah, it's an interesting yeah. spell that does a bunch of different things based on the target, which is nice, actually. But the best case scenario, it's like it's just slightly chilly. You don't want to pick it up. It's just oh, it's cold sword. Hmm. Cold sword. Uh, I'll pick it up. Like dark orb. That's just a good, good name. Uh, this book also has some little events. Not quite. Um, so it's a. It has an adventure for people, uh, seventh through eighth level, and there's a few events oh. that can actually ha. So there's a funny thing in here. There's actually events that can happen, and it even tells you at what point yeah. these events will happen in the adventure, which is interesting, and things that can Those happen. The gym has to know. Yeah, right. it's just it's just nice that it actually says, you know, it it splits everything for up into little events rather than, yeah. You know, so that the you book's do actually this, formatted like yeah. an actual adventure. Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Wizards of the Coast could learn a thing or two from that one. Fifty, and there's also things like uh, estimated time of the event. For example, uh, there's um. 15 f minutes if the characters don't get too involved, over an hour if they don't get involved in a large brawl. So even plans for... If your right. players don't get involved with this, here's what can actually happen, rather than just, oh, your players will do this, surely. 
Oh, okay. That's pretty nice. Um, use the old OGL. That's just, yeah, so it's old Vinen Gale. It's another Sovereign Stone part of the series. It is third edition, but there's probably a bunch of stuff you can convert into fifth. And there's just a bunch of lore and stuff in here. If you wanted to just take like 5e rules and just apply it to this, you could too. Just out of interest. Yeah. So that's old Vinen Gale. And it is apparently as archaic oh. as underhorse dwarves. So that's cute. What the... It's not their fault. They're un they're unhorsed. <laughs> they're unhorsed. So that's the weirdest way to describe a dwarf I've ever heard. Yeah. Were they like really good horse riders, and then those like they got knocked off once, and their culture's like you can't get back on? It's it's like um, it's like Mandalorian rules. You got you you get off oh, your yeah, horse yeah. once, you are officially unhorsed. They can't get back. Can't get back on. It's now you're exiled. You're in, you're in a horse now. So, uh, critical fumble is back. Hello, all. Yes. A critical fumble section. Have we got a critical fumble? Remarkably, and not 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 the not with the big dogs because. It's been, I guess it's been a slow week for Wizards, so nothing nothing down there. Mm. Um, I haven't heard much from the other controversy. Is it? But yeah, we talk, li talk literal fumbles. Um, there's There was the... Uh, well, the, there was the, the friendly game on uh, Friday, which uh, one mook just refused to die. Yeah, yeah, we had um <laughs> Alexander, think you called him? That Alexander, right. yeah, Alexander the zombie Alexander, was a man yeah. who refused to die. Yes, he was a, a zombified soldier who was like only good, at, only barely good at hitting things with the butt of his gun, and he just got like eight rounds to get rid of him. And this is a game where you have like a really. A really brutal injury system and like two wounds for yeah. everything. So, really shouldn't have taken long to do it. Just, just didn't die. He it was he was a good lad though. Bless him. He didn't get much killing done, but he did. Weren't. He did avoid death for a long time. Yeah, the others weren't. Oh, well, they were pathetic. Um, I suppose. Um, well, it's pretty cool. Fumbles. I suppose there's uh, the only thing I really can think of is the continuing drama with that uh, con that's quote unquote too white. Oh, is, is there, is there, more, is there more tea? Is there more? Is there more tea to this to this brew? Um, no, nothing beyond Twitter arguments, which is kind of like you know, is there anything more useless than a Twitter argument? <laughs> I know, yeah. Unless it's a really funny argument. Yeah, if it's like an argument well, that's like so stupid, it's funny. It's 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 great. It's great. It, the argument would be like, uh, how 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 dark is toast? Yeah, that'd be like a, an argument that'd be quite funny. So. My my critical fumble this week is slightly political. Um, we don't normally talk about politics on this. Oh However, um, it was something very funny. I was reading the paper. Um, you know that the general of the UK army is like, we want to bring back conscription. And someone in the military, oh, heard of this. Someone in the military pointed out, okay, this is a great, this is a terrible idea for various reasons. One, it's training them up. The other thing is apparently they did like a war game uh, thing recently. You know, as they do to test things. To do with Russia and whatnot. Yes. Apparently, ra they, in this simulation, they ran out of ammo, munitions, in eight days. So, so who was being <laughs> simulated? In, uh, I don't exactly know the details, but. Ah, okay. Yeah, I have heard about this. I think they were saying that the, the reason that would work was because people just wouldn't, people just wouldn't show up for conscription. They, yeah. They'd wouldn't get arrested for it. Yeah. It's like, 
what's the other the classic is like shoot yourself so, just get yeah, two two of you to shoot each other in the foot yeah so take this with very many pinches of salt i'm looking at a article from the daily fail here um apparently simulated 10 day oh, no. online war exercise uh, commander of the U.S. Army in Europe. Right. So, in a ten-day, so they ran out two days early, which isn't good. Uh, a computerized simulation. What are they doing? Were they, they directing Predator? I don't know. Expenditures get off the charts when you get into a serious high-end on-force conflict. This is what Mr. Hodges allegedly said. Well, at least he's quoted as. Yeah. Every every. Right. So, oh. War games involving the US, the UK, and France took place four months ago, with the UK third edition taking part. Uh, this simulation saw 1,300 British troops fighting alongside the French and US counterparts. The exercise was due to last for 10 days, but UK, right. specifically UK thir third division, ran out of ammunition after eight days. So the other divisions for the US and the France, completely fine, oh, no. possibly, uh, allegedly. UK, not so much. Oh dear. Oh dear. Of course, the to run out of ammo. We need to feed their machine guns. They're very yeah. hungry. So, getting. So, having conscription is absolutely fine, I guess, quote unquote. Not really, but. Eh. But for the purposes of this, yeah, you can have a million extra people. That doesn't change the fact no that ammunition. you don't. Yeah, what they're going to do? Slap the enemy. <laughs> okay. Bayonets. Yeah, yeah, bayonets. I, I guess. Just hope the enemy has also ran but out of ammo. Loads of lo it's, but loads of bayonets. Uh, that's it. That's that's my. I, I, I like to imagine they were. <laughs> it's just yeah. funny. It's by the sound of it, they were. By the sound of it, they were like, you know that one scene from Predator where they're just shooting the jungle for like three minutes. Yeah. We're just doing that. Like days, just shooting, yeah, just, just days on end. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, we're out. Oh, why did that happen? Uh, I've heard actually that another problem, that a huge issue they have is uh, this: uh, there are too many fat soldiers. Oh, oh dear. Ah, that's that's not just us. That's the US too. Um, just there's too many fat recruits, and a load of them have to go on specific uh, proper programs just to get in a reasonable fighting weight. Yeah, that's going to be a prob kind of problem that's going to be exasperated when you're just conscripting people left, right, and center. Because, like, yeah. a, a friend of mine years ago went into, you know, trying to, d to apply for the army. He said their entry requirements for yeah. physical are really high yes and course. most people like i wonder why most ordinary people will unless you go to the gym anyway are not going to fit that description immediately therefore those people will need to go on sort of weight and you know whatever exercise training before they can weight even start before they can even start the actual military training <laughs> It, that I'm I'm okay with the high standards. I mean, you you can't just send like Baz down the road. Well, true, but the it's... rifle off to a desert. Well, what I'm saying is the the implication of oh yeah, we'll, we'll just take conscripts is is so stupid. <laughs> they're assuming they're like they have been shoot firing longbows at like Welsh people for like this whole yeah. Time they're, they're assuming that like every other bloke. And women now, because it's in all it's you know equal opportunity army have been like yeah. you know bl uh, Dunkirk mentality going to the gym for the past well whenever Russia started invading Ukraine because of course we'd do that because everyone wants to be in the military that's why they their volunteer levels yeah, are lower than great. fucking ever. It was fun. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, real war is fun. No one does in real war. Yeah, it's, it's like. It's like, yeah, there's just so, uh, but the, the munitions yeah. thing is the one I want to focus on, because that's just the funniest the, thing. See, but to, be, to be fair, that is a bit more pertinent as well. It's not just a don't want to, it's uh can't shoot anything. Yeah. Out of bullets. <laughs> it's okay. I'm out of magazines. <laughs> it's okay. I'm out of magazines. I'll, I'll throw a spear at them, I guess. Sheesh. That's the new British army. Just hurling... 
<laughs> javel- hur- hurling bone javelins. It's like... just, yeah, bone javelins, sometimes bone javelins <laughs> that are on fire. Yes. We are, of course, referencing... I'm glad. I, I, I don't want to see a conscription, because uh, people will die. That shouldn't yeah. be in the army anyway. Yeah. This is, this, like, the ultimate thing is, like, there are a lot of people, especially nowadays, that probably, like, shouldn't be in the army. N- no offense to anyone, but it's like, you are, A, not stupid, no, I'm, I'm joking, you're not, like, got the right mindset or the right body type to even be in the army effectively anyway. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, just, then it, then it, then it can actually, uh, get people that are in shape or are of the right age or yeah what have you and it can get them killed because they got squad mates that aren't up to par yeah it's it's it it's one of those things it's like you're not helping you're actually that shit and that untrained that you're actually a detriment overall yep it's fine when like russia does it because russia has that kind of just cannon fodder mentality, and they, they've been doing that for, for they've been doing that for like uh, that's Russia. nearly a hundred years or so because that's what they do. Not saying it's right, but that's what they do. So, and there are countries like in Eastern Europe which have been like preparing for goodness knows how long. So of course they have Russia because because of the, yeah. So of course they have like citizen militias near enough because they're like oh shit, Russia's like right at our doorstep. And also, again, because at one point they're in the Soviet Union, where that was just normal. Again, yep. not saying it's right. You just but... hand him a rifle, and yeah. uh, there you go. You're a soldier now. Also, I, I don't know if it's the same in, like... I, I I think a lot of Europe, like the Eastern Europe particularly, I think has, like, laxer gun laws. So that's another thing. Is yeah, they we actually we know have the how... hardest gun laws, yeah. really. Yeah, that's the thing, is most of everywhere else in Europe actually knows how to use a firearm. Well, he's better than we do, because we are not allowed to use them. And mostly for good reason, but on the flip side, again, it doesn't help in a military standpoint where you have to teach someone how to fire a gun. Which Our knife brigades, though. Oh, Unstoppable. Yeah, knife brigades. Yeah. Well, they're they're, starting to, they're gonna ban zombie knives apparently in a couple of months. So I guess I guess our knife brigade is gonna take a hit. Uh. But how is that gonna work? Because what if they say, "Oh, it's it's not a zombie knife." I think there's like certain rules for what constitutes a zombie knife. I just find it funny how they're like, "We're going to ban zombie knives." At some point. So buy your zombie knives now and hide them before they get banned. Lose them in a river. Yes. Tend to lose them in a river or something. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Or, or, I don't know. The the other funny point. could just be a flat out criminal and go no. The zombie knife thing is who is who is buying these other than gang members and overly paranoid preppers? Like, People that just don't know good quality knives. Yeah, because anyone who actually understands zombie apocalypses at all would know that a knife is a really shit weapon to use in a zombie apocalypse. Like, a spear would be better. Yeah, Distance. You know? I mean, I've always thought as well, like, if you're going to regulate something, if you're going to commit a crime, you're going to want something you can't be traced to. Yeah. Something that they can't possibly legislate, so a, a heavy stick or a club. Yeah, the the other funny part to this... I can't regulate that. ...is apparently, again, I was reading the paper, so take with a pinch of salt. They want to ban zombie knives, but not things like katanas and ninja yeah. swords and things like that. Just specifically zombie knives. So, you know the other things the that, like, sword, crazy yeah. incels use to go out and fucking murder people because they're incel basement well, more brothers are going a bit yeah. crazy on 4chan. Yeah, those are fine. Zombie knives, though. Nah, I've got to ban the zombie knives. Well, it, it, right, you just have to confirm to the officers that uh, this this knife is not for zombies, and therefore legally not a zombie knife. This is a demon knife, thank you very much. The it, wraith knife, actually. Uh, but yes. This, yes. It, 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 was, it was consecrated Again, in my local church. <laughs> It's it's so overly vague that it's you can make the dumbest argument yeah. and actually annoy them with it. Yeah, so so that that's my critical form of the week. Just the government, and the army, 
making really just dumb decisions. Not even like corrupt decisions in this instance, just really stupid decisions. Yes. Uh, so yeah, but you would even some of their staff are like that's nah, dumb. Yeah, so yeah. we got our homebrew of the week. Da -da -da -da. Yes, I may yes, we made a thing. Yeah, I didn't write this uh, one out on my, my document thing. yet, there's but I thing. have got a thing. You just have um, to acknowledge that I uh, made my a thing. thing. I I made something actually above CR half this time because. Ooh. You know, I, I I only write for stuff that I'm really going to run, and I rarely run sessions past high high CR stuff. You know, people like with flaking and stuff. Yeah. So I got so I have 138 pages of CR half stuff, and a lot less of everything else. Um, I do have a thing. It's let me find it. It's called a right. Excuse the not quite Latin because I did. I was I was in a bit of a, a dinosaur mood at the moment at the moment of writing it, so I kind of used half a Latin name on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's called a spite pachycephalus, uh, which is sort of like a pachycephalus, like a it's like a fantasy pachycephalosaurus. Nice, because that's a cool looking thing. Um, find it. I'm having technical issues. We need like well, there's a what's that the Simpsons gag? Is like some wacky "We'll be right back" thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I should make. I, a, I should make a funny, technical. Then they get sad. I should make a technical issue. Scream for scream uh, screen <laughs> for this, where it's just um, <laughs> it's just it's just a picture of Jeremy Clarkson punching a producer. <laughs> it's, it's just scream as screamed as well. Ah. Yes, uh, Spider King. Yeah, it's like a fantasy Pachycephalosaurus. Um, let's have a look. But it's sort of, but it's got, but it's all got like a spiky crown, mm -hmm. rather than like a, the full, the full flat thing. Uh, so I want wanted to like basically make killer dinosaur cow was the basic idea, mm -hmm. like really angry uh, dinosaur equivalent of a cow. Uh, so mm. I, I, I kind of went a bit deeper. I made a profile for the ma for like, the male and females of like the herd because I thought that would be I mean, a little different. Yeah, there is some slight damage differences. Uh, they're both immune to being stunned because there's not there's really not much stuff that's immune to that for some reason. Yeah. Um. Also wrote it uh, in. So the ability is that when it's being attacked from the front, it's got an additional plus two AC because it's got a big hard head. That makes sense to me. Pretty simple, really. Works for me. Yeah, all it does, all it does is headbutt, but it also knocks you over. It's kind of like something you probably wouldn't be fighting unless you really wound it up, and it's kind of designed to be annoying to deal with. Hmm. It's not necessarily out to kill you, it's out to make you go just, nah, I'm not messing with this. It's like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm out, bye. Uh, it's kind of beefy though, it does it does. 1d6 bludgeoning and 1d6 piercing, because it's spiky as well. I have a thing for, like, mixing damage types. Hmm. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, the, the males get multi-attack, so they're slightly bigger, slightly harder. Mm -hmm. Nice. And they just hit that, and, and they're just a little bit bigger. Because I've always seen it's weird that, like, every... Because in nature, you find that sometimes you get, like... They call it uh, sexual dimorphism. Where yes. one member of the... One, where one sex is just bigger or stronger or something different than the other. Like, like how... I quite like that. And it's I, not... I, it doesn't show up in fantasy games much. My favourite instance of that is, like, male peacocks are, like, really pretty and, you know, bigger and whatnot. Oh, and well, the yeah. females just, like, kind of plain and ordinary. <laughs> Very feels like... <laughs> <laughs> just like a bunch of like sixties greasers dressed up in rainy nice jackets, just the the ordinary country girl from Greece, you know that kind of deal. Just, hey, hey, darling, oh, how, yeah. how'd you like my plumage? The, uh, the, the, why does it sound like builders trying to chat up a, a, a very attractive lady passing by? Yeah. 
But um, so yeah, that's um. Yeah, so that is that, that, that's my contribution for the week. Uh, yep. I just on a bit of a dinosaur binge at the time. I thought, you know what? Yep. There's not enough dinosaurs. Let's um, make something fun. So my homebrew for the week has been a little bit more inspired by I've been watching a lot of Nigel and Marmalade shorts lately. So I've made an aberration because of course I have. If you don't know Nigel and Marmalade, okay, so... go, go look it up. It's a series by, I think, Tom Bates. Very funny, very British kind of absurdist humor. But there's a thing in that where uh, I think, uh, Mar was it? Yeah, Nigel the wizard plants some, like, seeds, but they're actually eye seeds or something. And the, it makes this weird eye monster. So I made something called an eyesore. So it's a large aberration that sort of travels along with pseudopods. Uh, well, kind of like tentacly type boy, you know, wibbly boys. Um, that's somewhat stealthy, very good at perception because obviously it's a bunch of eyes. But opponents, so it can frighten things because it's weird. If you, if they, if opponent, if a creature seeing it fails by f the save by five or more, they become blind for a few rounds. So not only able to frighten, it can blind, because not enough things cause just straight up blindness. But I also gave it an interesting ability to suck out the eyes of the dead. For each eye it sucks out, it gains 1d6 max HP, and its size increases by by a factor of one, based on the D&D size system, for each milestone. So the milestones are 10, 20, 40, etc. Going from large to huge to massive to colossal to gargantuan. So it just, you know, eats eyes. It gets bigger, so don't let it eat that oh. many eyes. Because I thought that would make it for an interesting dynamic like... encounter. Sounds like some like folk story that parent would tell to this Child that we go to sleep. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Make Still sure you, take your eyes. Make sure you close your eyes when you're sleeping. Don't sleep with your eyes open, or the eyesore will come and suck out your eyes. A lot of good monster designs come from that line of thinking. Yeah. Then maybe I'll add that in its lore or something, or something like don't plan, don't when when that's what that's why you close people's eyes when you bury them so the eyes can't grow into eyesores. <laughs> Oh. That's why we close people's eyes when we bury them, because the dead. Oh, it's a superstition. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that's why we do it. And I, because I, I figured the, it can heal. Well, I guess because their max HP also heals it, and it can potentially become more of a threat if you leave it unchecked, prompting players to be like, "Okay, this thing needs to die," rather than "I want to be its friend." You won't want to be its friend when it's three times bigger and is sucking out the eyes of the local village. It doesn't sound funny if it takes eyes. That's instead of being gross thing, I think. Yeah. Just this wibbly boy. You like deal with. This is like activists. Hmm. Save the eyesore. Yeah. It's also it doesn't. De it's one of the creatures I designed to not deal a lot of damage. It deals one d four damage times its size, which uh, its base is about three d four, which isn't a huge amount for a CR three since it doesn't have multi attack. But it does have one hundred and fifty HP for a CR three. Uh, I did this big. Oh. It's not got. It's only got twelve AC, so it's not hard to hit. It's just a damage sponge. Is the idea? It's a weak, but annoying damage sponge that can potentially heal and become more of a problem if left unchecked. So it's one of those... It is, oh. It's good for players because, it, you know, instead of feeling like, oh, I keep missing the thing, you at least get some lot of meaty thwacks in. It's like a big piñata of eyeballs. Meat. Let's make it... You should have given a meaty flaps option. <laughs> Just meaty sounds. flaps? Just blinking Slam. on Slam. No, no, we call it meaty flaps here. <laughs> I that I, I did get uh, yeah I'll have to just 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 change slam to meaty flaps. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my homebrew of the week. I thought it was quite an interesting bit, something a bit weird. You know, I like weird stuff. A lot of stuff I seem to make seems to be of... CR three or four. Oh, and to be CR half to CR one because I you know because I I have a. Long list of level one to two sessions that never seem to happen. 
Yeah. So, uh, our next segment is Rolling for Regret. Ooh. Hey, yes. Um, yeah. Um, I, thought, I do have some this week, but fortunately, um, I, I had a hard time finding it. So that's good. Oh, um, oh dear. Let me just whisk it out. Let me just whisk it out. Um, There we are. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, this game is one that I think is it could be very interesting, mm -hmm. but the problem is I just bought... I, I bought the, from the shop I bought from, they only had, like, the expansions. Oh. So, it's very... I read it a few times. It's really weird and esoteric. Yeah, um, it is uh, a game called "Those Who Would Be Gods." Oh, um, the Black Void. Sorry, it's honestly a really weird concept. It's it's a bit, so it's a, so imagine like like all all the Babylon mm -hmm. just got weirded up by the void, effectively, which caused the cataclysm. So it's sort of like there are weird mutant alien people. Running around in what is technically for their modern Babylon, so it's kind of a really weird idea. The setting's kind of bonkers, mm -hmm. but it's sort of got Vampire the Masquerade syndrome, where every th they've renamed a lot of co common things, and it's really hard to actually, you know, figure out what on earth they're actually trying to say. Yeah, the symbology too weird. Um, they have a peekaboo. The art's quite good, and it's clearly got well thought out. But all the names are like Zutruk or something, oh. and it talks about all these like commonplace buildings, like the Aquazam. Yeah, it's like if you like if you don't have the core book, you're going to be so lost with this. Just uh... what, what's like, happening? Like, if, if, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's very good at being alien. It's just too good at being alien because I don't know what the hell it's trying to tell me. Mm. Like some of them, some of them are clearly sound like factions and stuff, but it's like it's written by an alien. <laughs> I don't know what it's trying to, to tell me. Um, which is the same because I quite, I quite like the idea. I just wish they'd laid it out better. Mm. Luckily, it cost me about a tenner, so it's not that bad. You win some, you lose a couple hundred, you know? Yes, it didn't cost me 45 quid like uh, the Dark Souls conversion. Oh. So, yeah. Um, so I don't have a rolling for regret in terms of something I bought I regret the purchase of. But I do have something that I regret the selling of. Oh no. So, years and years ago, I had the one of the editions of the D&D board game. The one that actually kind of played like an RPG. And I got rid of it, which, now that I'm DMing, was really fucking stupid, because some of that stuff is actually really useful for maps and stuff. <laughs> so, uh, whoops. And it's also probably not that cheap to get oh. hold of anymore. Especially since I had the ice. You probably couldn't expansion. find that nowadays. Yeah, because I had that in the ice expansion. Because at the time I bought it because I wanted to, you know, I, I was going to make a board game very similar to it in my own system with like the same system of like you know shuffling to see what equipment cards and stuff you get and things like that from chests because I thought it was interesting. Like a a roguelike dungeon board game is a really interesting concept that I really wanted to expand upon, and I never got around to doing it. And then I started college, <laughs> I kind of lost interest in the idea, yes, and I sold the things because I wanted to buy a video game. Actually, no, I think I was saving it for Comic-Con at the time. I was saving it for Comic-Con, and I was like, okay, I could just sell this and get rid of it, and get rid of my old GameCube and stuff. And I kind of wish I didn't now, because that stuff was quite useful. Turns out. Was it at least a good Comic-Con? 
It was, it was actually. It was the first time I went to Comic Con in London, and uh, I was dressed up as Kakyoin, so it was very fun. Uh, oh, look. At, at the time, it was very much worth it, but now looking back, I, I, I should not yeah. have sold those. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Probably 300 quid now on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Not that I would have sold them now anyway if I still had them. I would definitely actually use them for D and D mats and stuff and miniatures. In fact, I might even have painted those it's... miniatures now. Tile maps are good, just generally speaking. Um, I'm gonna actually look to see if I could find. I mean, D and D has that many board games now. Technically, I mean, Wizard the Ghost just has that many board games. A very different iteration, and it's just like I would never find the exact fucking version. Now would I on eBay? Even if I Google it. Ah, uh, so at the moment, uh, it's looking like a thirty-pound game. Actually, this is a few. So it's actually not that bad, I guess. It, but it's still like I wish I hadn't sold it because it just makes me feel stupid. Uh, I I feel like the ice expansion is probably a lot more expensive. Did it like make your movement or like video game icy so they like do double movement? You know, I never actually checked it. I, I kept it sealed, which is makes me feel even stupider oh. to be honest, because it was oh. sealed. Um, that, that, that's yeah, that sounds good. So someone, I hope someone loved that. <laughs> it's it's likewise. Worth a bit. likewise, at least it's better than um, which book was it? Um, there was the Right, the the f the fifth edition version of Dragonlance, Ooh. where there were whole there were whole sections of that book that were completely like skipped. Play, because you play this scenario in the board game. Play the board game, yeah. It's like, but you you drop like what thirty, forty quid on the on the book to to run Dragonlance, and some of the the whole sections are like. To simulate this battle, play the uh, play the um, Dragonlance board game. <laughs> so... oh. Big yikers! Yeah, it wouldn't have taken them. Wouldn't have taken that much work to just have like a list of like the ten, just a list of like gen like sort of generic soldiers and stuff. Yeah, to simulate it as a group combat wouldn't have been that hard. They put all the stuff at the back anyway. Um, but no, they just they completely cheaped out. Mm. Yeah, so that's our rolling for regret. Uh, so we don't have a fantasy film this week because we didn't actually get round to doing what the film oh. thing. Because... I, I, I have plenty of recommendations though. Oh. <laughs> Why don't, why don't you why don't you oh, well. give us an i give us and chat and our viewers <laughs> at home listeners uh, a recommendation of a stupid fantasy film to watch? You want to if you want to see a film that you're never gonna forget. Uh, there's a, a film. So to put the con so this is the first film Sean Connery did after being after being James Bond because he's worried about being typecast. Mm-hmm. So this, so this, this should have been a huge thing for him. There's a film called Zardoz. Okay. And it's a, it, it's a, it's a sci-fi. Uh, I want to say sci-fi art film. It's very, it's trying to say something very big. Hmm. Weirdest possible way. Uh, so. Uh. So imagine, right? So Sean Connery is not playing James Bond anymore. One of the best roles any actor could get for most, for most, if not all decades. Now he's playing someone called Zed, who is an exterminator who doesn't deal with like pests. He like is a dude with a gun who weirdly kills other people at following the commands of a giant head who calls itself Zardoz. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, I, I assure you, this is all a very real film. Um, I the first 
I said the first five minutes are worth watching the for the, the whole movie because it just sets the bar really high for just <laughs> pure weirdness. Uh, I I love those kind of like B movie type things that have just a plot that is just the plot itself makes sense, but the concept is just so nonsensical and strange. It's like okay. Oh yeah, yeah. The weird thing is that it it's trying to make a big philosophical statement about life and stuff. It, it's it's trying, but it's doing it in the world's strangest way. Yeah, it's it's like it's 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 like a fever dream. If it was a movie, that is bizarre. Uh, it's it's. I do I I do love it though. Um, it has the I think the strangest plot twist I've ever seen because it it, it doesn't even feel like a plot twist. That is. Definitely a sentence. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. It's it's. Oh, and uh, I probably should mention that Sean Connery spends like most of the um most of the film wearing like a red uh, mankini, <laughs> running around <laughs> with a revolver. It's... Oh, that is a beautiful mental image. What the fuck? If if you if you see it. Uh, you can get a whole a whole look. Um, uh, anybody, I would recommend it just the f first five minutes. If we could get one of our listeners to please, w either watching or better without watching, send us artwork of sh of your uh, art style of Sean Connery in a mankini with a blue revolver. <laughs> a bright <laughs> red mankini. Stupidest fucking visual I've ever had pop into my head. Oh, and, and he's starting to. He's, and he looks kind of balding as well. It's it's oh. a really good look. <laughs> Amazing. Arugula does not, not have a theme tune. Arugula not him. Oh, it doesn't have a theme tune. Oh, that, that that's a so no. it's, it's losing to your the heart to the future in that aspect. Yes, oh. not, yes, <laughs> it does. It does have the best five minutes of any film I've ever seen. Um, oh. I've never forgotten it. Nice. nice. Just, just don't expect it to make sense. Just, just take it all in, and then, um, like that. That's kind of it. Hmm. It, it's, it's certainly of its time, and I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they made it. But I, I yeah, I yeah, That's that's Zardoz for you. Um, I thought you were gonna say though. That uh, you're trying to get some of your chat members to just attend Comic Con, like on en mass, dressed like that. Which is, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> mankinis and revolvers. <laughs> mankinis and revolvers. Just everybody cosplay characters from Zarbon, Zargon. Yeah, <laughs> everyone. Everybody Zed the Exterminator from Zardoz. Oh, we we can have we can have we can have a Zardoz. Or Zardoz himself. We can have Zardoz versus your the Hunter of the Future meetup. Exp <laughs> Just... I, I, I want to influence people to put up the most obscure cosplay that no one's gonna get. <laughs> Just the, the weirdest shit imaginable. I love it. How, what do you mean you don't recognize me? I'm your Hunter from the Future. <laughs> Even better if you it's show like, with like a giant a Comic Con that like Sean yeah, Connery is appearing at for whatever reason. Like oh my God. You, you dress up as Zarbot the giant if head. If you did that. And you ask him to sign your copy <laughs> of the movie or like some memorabilia from that specific movie. <laughs> Not like, you know, ah, James Bond, never heard of it, but Zarg. <laughs> I d didn't see all your James Bonds, but I saw Zardos 20 times in one sitting. It's the weirdest fan ever. I think if you're gonna do like cosplay for your hunter from the future, though, I think you you have to like talk to someone who knows how to make props and just show up with the giant dead bat. Yeah. Good, and you can't walk into the con. You have to like glide in. <laughs> glide in. Uh, get someone to blast the theme tune, and a whole like twelve people might know it. A whole twelve people. That's yep. yeah. Yeah. I'm. We, 
between the it's between the two of us, we're gonna like worse. absolutely ruin Comic Con forever by get by convincing people to wear the weirdest, most obscure cosplays known to man. Loads of w- weirdly like half half dress. It's, it's really cheap though. To be fair, that's true. That's true. It's not that like, expensive to come up with these. The problem is, it would probably break decency laws. Yeah, there is that. Um, public nudity is not really. Kind of frowned upon. I'm pretty sure at Comic Con, no matter who you are. Yeah. So that that has would, been uh, yes. our podcast for the week. Have any closing thoughts? Uh, yes. Um, watch Zardoz, and uh, if and uh, and if you're going to be uh, playing any tabletop games. Uh, this this week, I would recommend uh, looking in something that's not D and D, not because D and D is rubbish, but because you might actually get some ideas on how to run other games and actually make your D and D games a bit more interesting. Just learning yeah. other systems. Uh, I do think I do think that's thing that does need to be said sometimes. People get comfy with Five E because it's easy. Yeah, and it is good, but you you do learn a lot from reading other less well known rule sets and settings and what have you this is true um my my, my closing thought for this uh, episode is uh if you're going to do something with its ttrpgs or i don't know a literal military please make sure that you have everything prepared for the time frame you're going to use it in <laughs> And don't just leave it to the wind, because you might wind up in the middle of a French uh, field with two days to go and no ammo left. Or in the case of a D&D game, you might wind up with uh, two hours left to gameplay and you've run out of session notes. It happens, folks. Make sure you're, you're going prepared. going to war, don't run out of books. Yep. Okay. It sounds like a Chinese proverb. When going to battle, make sure not to run out of bullets. It'd be an American proverb, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyway, that's it from me, Kaolic Jerksack, and from Byzantia Dev. We will see you, fine folks, in see the next, you next one. week. Let's raid out. Who, who's live right now to raid? Uh, who we got? Hold up. Who's who's doing a live? Pardon me. Uh, da, 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 da. We could uh, cross up. Let let's raid. Um, yeah, let's raid. Craft al jalapeno. Craft jalapeno. Hang on a minute. They're playing on tabletop simulator. Cool. So they're they're playing a board see you, game. See you all next week. Yeah. So uh, hold on a minute. I'm just gonna. Eh. Uh, exclamation mark raid them uh raid message is oh i'm sorry slash raid them yeah. raid message is below copy the raid message uh you can get a channel points or you can sub if you like bye bye everyone